Their defense is a joke. What it really comes down to is I would love to have either of them. They don't have a, a prayer in their secondary. They have nothing. So you're saying just don't draft Blunt? I'm saying don't draft Blunt. He was unbelievably efficient last year. You know that they use their running backs in the passing game a ton. I'm drafting him tonight. That's Team Huevos. Huevos <laughs> <laughs> Gigantes. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome into the Fantasy Bros Football Podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Sylvester, joined as always by Mike Tagliere, and Kyle Yates is back on the show today. What's up, Yates? Hey, not much. I am, uh, I'm in a good mood, guys. I get to actually go on a date night with my wife tonight, like actually out to a restaurant. We're going to be, of course, on, man. you know, using masks, being socially distant, but I'm excited. This is the first time that we've actually been able to go out to a restaurant in months. That's... How are you going to eat? Uh, I'll probably have to take the mask off. <laughs> <laughs> Tags, what's going on, buddy? Nothing much. I'm in a good mood as well. I, uh, I'm i going to be going to uh, Tennessee, actually, for the weekend. We're going to be going down there to kind of scope out the area. And for those cool. who haven't heard, uh, we're talking about moving down to Tennessee maybe next year. Uh, we've also debated, I don't know if you guys know, like, do you guys know anybody that lives in Alabama? Are they happy? Because I've actually looked down into the like, northern Alabama area. Like, I, We're looking to go south. We want the weather to be nicer and that we're still able to drive yeah. back home to Chicago. My dad used to live in my, – my mom and dad used to live in northern Alabama, and they absolutely loved it in the woods up there. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's a nice area, man. Um, I, I, I'm going to be really sad, though, if you leave Illinois because I want an excuse to go up to Chicago and eat some Portillo's. Man. Well, we better do that over the next year. By the way, Portellos, if you're listening, we need a sponsorship. We, <laughs> we talk do. about you guys all the time. <laughs> I do. want the Happy Gilmore deal where you guys give me free food for life. Yeah, just Hook a card. Up, all we need is a card that just says we get free food. That's all good. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, guys, uh, follow us on Twitter if you don't already. We're at Bobby Fantasy Pro, at Mike Taglier NFL, and at Kyle Y NFL. Just a bunch of quick hitting thoughts that you know we don't always talk about on the podcast but it's just oh i'm thinking about this during the day i'll tell you what i think about fantasy football i do fantasy baseball as well tags and yates of course a uh, tweet about all that pop culture stuff is that right tags oh absolutely <laughs> i'm all just that, kidding all it's all sports <laughs> all the time dorks over on twitter uh, we're also on instagram at the same spot um we've got a youtube channel youtube.com slash fantasy pros in fact you can watch these youtube videos over there um, so, Tex, we've got a poker contest going out. We do. Now, Yates wasn't invited. I don't really know why. What, what's the deal with that, Yates? Uh, I don't play poker. Oh, so you don't play would, poker? I was about okay. to say, Explain that's probably it. a good reason why. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's uh, we're hosting a poker tournament on Thursday, June 25th. Tags, Dan Harris, and myself, um, we're going to be playing. Tags, are you going to be? I mean, you're not going to beat Dan. Are you going to beat me? Uh, I mean, I hope so. I really do hope so. I, I, I'm better, I think, in real life poker than I am online because there's no like reading people. It's it's a different experience, right? So I'm, sure. I'm, I'm already trying to make excuses for when I get knocked out, uh, but I'm definitely going to try and beat you. And by the way, if you beat us, there are prizes up for grabs. We're talking cash prizes, free, free premium upgrades, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. You can check out the details at fantasypros.com slash poker. Again, that's fantasypros.com slash poker guys you ready to chat let's ready. do it what are we talking about today what? i'm just kidding it's my favorite episode <laughs> baby hot takes let's go i knew exactly <laughs> what we were talking about we've each got five of them we're gonna count them down one at a time yates you get to go first set the bar oh man okay so tags and i were talking about this before the podcast that this is such a difficult episode for me because i really mm -hmm. try to i'm super measured in my projections i right. really try to stay like true to the process and so trying to go like super far out there is really just not in my personality whatsoever so in these i mean like, like I you're always talking about like the 50th percentile outcome what is the most likely to happen and there's definitely a place for that it's very important i totally respect it but like you certainly understand 90th percentile crazy things happen. So what is your first one that you think is, you know, there's a chance that it happens? Yeah, completely. Well, I'm going to start off the conversation, guys, with my number fifth player, and that's Joe Burrow. Uh, my hot take here is Joe Burrow will finish as a top seven QB in 2020. I think that he's landing in a perfect situation where you're talking about a very, very talented player to begin with, right? That's one of the things that you have to be betting on when you're talking about a rookie quarterback stepping in and who doesn't necessarily have the rushing upside of Lamar Jackson, even Kyler Murray last year. It was pretty easy to be able to say Kyler Murray can finish as a top eight, top five QB based on his rushing ability. Joe Burrow has underrated rushing ability, but he, does, he doesn't have the type of mobility that Lamar Jackson does, right? So when you're, when you're looking at a rookie quarterback finishing where I'm saying that he's going to finish, then you have to be betting on him as a high processor, fast processor, 
high quality player and that's what Joe Burrow is. So then now you're looking at this right. offense is still going to pass have to pass the ball a ton because their defense took strides forward, but yet is still uh, I think outside the top 20, you know, in the right, right. lower um lower units there. And then this is an offense that's going to pass the ball a ton and then he's got weapons galore. Right, you have these receiving options of AJ Green, Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, John Ross, Joe Mixon out of the backfield, Giovanni Bernard. This is he's in the perfect situation for him to come out of the gate swinging and be a top seven option at the quarterback position right away. What do you think about that, Tags? I'm I'm right in line. It's actually going to tie into one of my bold predictions or hot takes that I have on this show. Uh, so real quick. I think that we can all agree that 7.1 yards per attempt should be relatively easy to come by for someone like Joe Burrow, right, in this offense? Yeah. All right, 60% completion rate. Sounds about – that's fair enough. I mean, yeah, he's probably going to complete more than that. polished rookie quarterback, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, Matt Moore, like he's Teddy Bridgewater. Throw the ball. He's legitimately going to throw the ball 600-plus times. That's exactly where I'm at. I was going with this, is that I have him down for 605 pass attempts, completing 60%, 7.1 yards per attempt. Uh, and then the touchdown rate I have is 4.1%, which is uh, – which is, is That's it's very decent, low. It's a decent number. And, again, I tried being very, like um, – conservative with my projections on Joe Burrow because I'm high, I am high on this offense. But even with that, I came in 12 interceptions, but I'm rushing for 265 yards and two touchdowns. He came in as my QB 12 in projections. And again, I can make the case that his, his completion percentage is going to go up, that his yards per attempt can be higher towards someone like even, even Jared Goff last year, 7.4. Um, Someone like Derek yeah. Carr. I mean, 7. like Joe, Joe Flacco last year was 7.0, just to give you guys a heads up. Like right. Sam Darnold, 6.9. Case Keenum, 6.9. Kyle Allen, 6.8. Right. So that's yep. very conservative tags. And Zach Taylor, I mean, he had a bad break his first year in the offense. You, you look at the entire offense and you say, well, they lost their first round pick. They're starting left tackle. Uh, they lost A.J. Green for the season. John Ross was dinged up throughout the year. Uh, so there was just so much going on with this team. Obviously, Andy Dalton not yeah. playing great, getting benched. So there was a lot going on. I, I love this one, uh, and I am directly directly in line with Yates on it and the fact that I think that yeah. it, it is bold to say he's going to finish uh, as like a top seven quarterback but yeah I, I I think that's a good one you know those efficiency metrics you're throwing out tags it's like what Sam Darnold did last year but with a ton of extra volume and if Sam Darnold had 600 pass attempts and he ran the ball yeah he'd be a top 10 fantasy football quarterback so uh, we'll see what Burrow does I love the upside there what do you think the odds on this one are yet though Yates like you think there's a 20% chance he finishes top seven? Um, I do. Yeah, I think it's in that range. I think that, yeah. you know, it, it's one of those ones that I think is a hot take because you're talking about historically rookie quarterbacks don't come out of the gate and finish as a top seven option, right? So then it is a little bit of a hot take, but yet there is a legitimate path for this taking place. Right. And the right. benefit here is that for us and tying it into a redraft, like his ADP is super low right now. You can get Joe Burrow as in your in the last round of your draft. Yep, I agree with that. Yep. Um, all right, Tags, you're up next. What do you have for your first hot take? My number five hot take is that the Chargers, the Los Angeles Chargers, score fewer touchdowns than any other team in the league. Holy and, uh, moly. You know, I don't think many people realize that they were the number 21 scoring team last year. Uh, that Obviously not good. And then going from Phillip Rivers to Tyrod Taylor and Justin Herbert, we can't pretend that that's, that's an upgrade. Uh, Going to be a lot lower vol volume. They've added talent on the defensive side of the ball. They, they were young. They're getting better. Uh, this is a team that I think they want to win the ball by legitimately playing dominant defense. And, you know, they're, I think their over-under for win total was eight. I said the under on that. I think Anthony Lynn is a, a candidate to get fired in season uh, with like the underperforming team as it's kind of as the time has gone on it's been less and less it, they've been performing under expectations so uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that they're the bottom scoring team in the league and that uh, you're basically looking a lot looking at a lot of overpriced talent on that team because of what they've been in the past can we not pretend that Philip Rivers was anything besides horrible last year 38 year old quarterback dealing with I don't know if it was a shoulder injury or an elbow injury, but like he was holding his arm after every pass he made, man. He couldn't throw it. I mean, he threw it downfield a lot, but he didn't have the zip on the ball that he used to have. We talk about these quarterbacks hitting the wall like Peyton Manning. Guys, it happened with Phillip Rivers last year. How much of a downgrade is it really with Tyrod Taylor Yates? It's it's hard to compare it because it's a different offense, mm -hmm. right? Where Phillip Rivers yeah, sure. threw the ball 591 times last year. Guys, there's no way that the Chargers come anywhere close to that this year. So I think that, and you're talking about last season and what, and to prove your point, Bobby, Jameis Winston had 30 interceptions last year. If Jameis Winston, you know, 
through 18, whatever. We would be talking about Philip Rivers' 20 interceptions a lot right. more than we are. Um, and so I think that, yeah, it's it's concerning. The way that they want to win football games now is to control the clock, take care of the football, which is what Tyrod Taylor does really, really well because he doesn't air it out downfield. And so that there are some concerns there, especially, like Tag said, there are some overpriced options. Guys, I'm, I'm right in line with Tags here, and you'll find out why in just a little bit. Tags, this one really hurts my feelings because you know I'm a big Keenan Allen guy, Mike Williams guy, Hunter Henry guy, Justin Jackson guy. Um, I disagree with you. Well, I, I think it's possible on the touchdowns thing. They're winning eight games, though, baby. This defense is hot. It is so good. I, um, well, I don't, but that's what I'm saying. I don't know of the defense, why that has to play into the offense. It's, I, it's well, no, no, of, I'm saying they're winning the games. But by the way, like, if you think they're going to have the fewest touchdowns, did you know that there's a, a football team in Washington, Tags? <laughs> there is a football team in Washington. There's no way they're scoring more touchdowns than the Chargers. Hey, no again, again, this way. was a hot take. Okay. Um, and I mean, well, if you wanted me to say bottom three, I could have done that, but okay, sure. Yeah, it didn't we'll, sound we'll as bold. go with bottom three, and you're still wrong. <laughs> um, here's mine, okay. And uh, I think you guys might like this one. I'm gonna go from least spicy to most spicy, and you guys oh, yeah. know it's gonna get really spicy. <laughs> so here's my least spicy. Jags aren't gonna draft a quarterback next year, guys. Yeah, well, that's that's wrong. I think that Gardner Minshew might be really good. Here are the only players in NFL history with a better interception rate, more yards per attempt, and just as many rushing yards. Robert Griffin. That's it. As a rookie. That's it. Mm-hmm. He was he was really good last year. And I think that, you know, it's starting to look back at the numbers and, and look at what he actually put up. Like, you know, you really don't think about Gardner Minshew and think about the fact that he threw... 21 passing touchdowns last year you know and given in the given the fact that he was in and out of the lineup right there were stretches yeah. where he Nick started Foles, 12 games yeah you know and he threw 21 passing touchdowns to only six interceptions so i get your point bobby i With think that no offensive line 7.0 yards per attempt that's not bad that's what you're projecting for burrow tags yeah yeah i think that you know you have to talk about though the fact that jacksonville saw so many pieces Oh, depart from that defense, right? So I don't think that this defense or this team is going to be very good. And so then you're talking about them finishing with, you know, first, second, third overall, you know, draft pick. So then at that point, you're staring guys like Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, Trey Lance in the face. It's going to be very, very difficult for you to pass on one of those top tier guys and keep Gardner Minshew. Or they just go out and get a Sewell, a Penny Sewell right. from uh, offensive tackle from Oregon, man. I mean, this might be the best offensive tackle we've seen in a decade. I haven't watched him yet, but I've heard really, really good oh, things about this guy. Oh, man. I mean, this was a very good offensive tackle class, right? We had four or five really good guys. This guy puts them all to shame. He is phenomenal, man. I can't wait for you to see him, Yates. So, Tags, there's, you think there's no way this is happening? No. What, uh, what would Gardner Minshew have to do to keep his job? Well, I mean, is it about wins? Is it about... 4,500 yards, fewer than it's 10 about, touchdowns. Yeah, it's about, it, it would be about fewer wins. Than that, 10 interceptions. Wins would be the only thing that would keep him in that job because the he reason He was 6-6 six six well, in his 12 starts last the year. The reason I say that is because, well, the defense has gotten a lot worse. Yeah, uh, sure. You know, but the reason I say wins is because that's the only way it doesn't happen because that's the only way they get away from the top of the draft. And if, if okay. they have a pick at the top of the draft, there's a couple of quarterbacks, one that you guys I know are particularly high on, but uh, Trevor Lawrence is a guy that... No matter who has the number one pick, he's going there or they're trading out of it. And trading out of it, you know, it, it might be difficult to do because a lot of teams would have to literally sacrifice mortgage their future in order to move up to that number one pick. So it, it's more thinking about who would you rather have for your franchise? And I don't even care if Gardner Minshew plays competently this year. Um, who would you rather have for your franchise, Minshew or Trevor Lawrence? And the answer sure. for every single scout in the NFL is going to be Trevor Lawrence. So Just uh, like when Alex Smith was an MVP candidate and they drafted Patrick Mahomes anyway. Mm-hmm. Well... Yeah, I mean, Mahomes was a MVP candidate the year they drafted Mahomes, like that year with Mahomes in the roster, because uh, Smith played. Sure. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, but either way, I, there's no way that Minshew's a starting quarterback for the Jags next year. Is he uh, a starting quarterback for any team? No, there's there's so much talent around in that, you know, guys like we've talked about it, guys Dude, like him. he might be better forward. than Kyler Murray. No. He might be better than Kyler Murray. He was, he was better than Kyler I, Murray last year. The only difference is volume. That was it. Kyle Murray's a little bit better of a runner. I'm one to say that I think that 
Kyler Murray's rookie season was overrated in terms of like what people thought he did. He threw for 6.9 yards per attempt. He didn't necessarily rush. Less he didn't change the game the way the game was played by opposing defenses. Like, you know, Kyler Murray wasn't someone I was particularly high on coming out of college. So what I saw is, is kind of similar to what I expected out of him. I don't think that sure. he's ever going to be an elite quarterback in the NFL. But I, 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 if I'm forced to choose, I'm still taking Kyler Murray over him. The other, the other part rate was almost twice as high. The other part in this conversation too is that, and you're, what you're saying, Bobby, with your hot, with your take here, is that if the Jags do finish with a top five overall draft pick, Doug Marone's gone. Yes, so he's then he, yeah. he's yes. he's gone. So then bringing at that Mike point Leach, you're bringing baby. in you're bringing <laughs> you're bringing in a new head coach, and then at that point they're going to say, okay, do I take the guy who I you know inherited here with Gardner Minshew, Fair. no matter sure. how well he plays, or do I go and get the guy who can be a perfect fit for my system? And who I think could fit any system in Trevor Lawrence. I think that's the other part of it. But I get what you're saying, Bobby, in that I think Gardner Minshew is underrated. And we do need to be talking about him, you know, and recognizing what he did last year. I think he's going to be fine this season. I don't know if it's going to be enough to hold off someone like Trevor Lawrence or Trey Lance. All right, Yates, your turn for number two, buddy. I am going to go off of what Tag said. and, uh, And we didn't talk about these before the podcast, so I don't know. I don't know the rest of your list, Bobby. I don't know the rest of Tags' list. So there are going to be some overlap here. And with Tags talking about the Chargers, I'm going to t- uh, dovetail on that. Mike Williams will finish outside the top 60 wide receivers oh, in 2020. <laughs> Tyrod Taylor, oh, has, man. Ty- Tyrod Taylor <laughs> has never topped 20 passing touchdowns in a season, and that was in 2015. He played 15 games in that season, 15 games in the next season, and I think 14 in the year after that. And his touchdowns went down 20, 17, and 14 in those three years. I mean, Williams can't really go backwards in the touchdown department. He had two last year. Well, with a thousand yards. Well, you're talking about then if you if this offense does get into the red zone, the opportunities there are going to be again. Tyrod Taylor doesn't want to put the ball in a situation where it could be picked off. So then you're going to try to keep the ball on the ground. Expect a lot of option runs there with either Josh Kelly, uh, Austin Eckler, Bobby. I'll mention Justin Jackson for you. But I think I'm that, going to talk know, about him extensively later. Don't worry. You know, Keenan Allen has never been a high touchdown total guy. Mike Williams thrives off of low target totals, high yards per reception, targets downfield. Again, we talked about it. Philip Rivers just, <laughs> I think Tags used the phrase degaffs it, you know, and just threw it up to Mike Williams, which is what he's so good at. Topper Taylor doesn't yeah. do that. So then he needs, in order for to- Mike Williams to finish as a, a high end fantasy football wide receiver he needs to be doing it with high yards per reception and he needs to be doing it on the back of eight plus touchdowns 10 plus touchdowns he has the talent to do it i like mikey williams the player however you're talking about this offense and the fact that tyrod taylor has never topped 20 passing touchdowns in a season even if tyrod taylor you know misses or uh you know gets benched for justin herbert justin herbert's not going to come in here and throw 25 touchdowns you know so there really isn't much upside here for Mike Williams this season. I'm staying far away. Tags, reaction, baby. I'm not opposed to this. Uh, I was actually just going through and pulling up my rankings in, in terms to see where Mike Williams was in projections because projections, again, this is the most likely scenario. He came in at wide receiver 46. So I'm not like mm. crazy high on Mike Williams or anything, and I am worried about this offense. I don't know if I'd say outside the top 60 because he There'd is have, a guy that's has in, to be a, an injury. He's a threat in the red zone, too. Uh, where it's like if he's the one-on-one guy, you could see Tyrod Taylor target him in the red zone. Um, so I don't know if I'd go outside the top 60. I, I would have felt better if you said outside the top 50, but that probably wouldn't have been hot taking enough. Right. So uh, I'm not Fair. I'm not yeah. opposed to this, but top 60s, is re- it's relatively easy to get in the top 60. So that that is a yeah. little bit too bold for my taste. Like I'm pulling it up now, uh, guys like Zach Pascal finished top 60 last year. Right. Um, right. Yeah, Chris top. Conley was number forty-two. Cole the, Beasley, well, 34. he had he actually had a better season than I think people remember. But Miko yeah, Hardman, yeah. Uh, Kenny Stills, those are wide receiver fifty-nine. Hard, and Hardman 16. had like five targets, and they were all ninety-yard <laughs> touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I don't know, man. Yates, you made some good points. I'm still going to disagree with you. Um, I, I I think it would take an injury, but I could definitely. I'm bumping him down my rankings, man. Uh, good stuff. Uh, Tags, we're going to get to yours in just a second, but first, uh, we do have a giveaway going on. In fact, we've got two giveaways going on. We're giving away a Fielder's Choice wallet, and we're doing that at the end of this month. Um, Fielder's Choice wallet is made from vintage baseball glove leather. You are going to absolutely love it. I've got one myself. Um, We're also giving away a signed DeAndre Hopkins Cardinals helmet, um, and that ends on July 15th. 
So make sure to enter in for the contest. Here's what you need to do. Leave an honest review on either Apple Podcasts or Stitcher. Send us a screenshot of that review and send it to us at contest at fantasypros.com. You can check out all the details at fantasypros.com slash contest. Tags, hot take number two. Hot take number two is that Clyde Edwards-Hilaire will win fantasy titles. And I'm saying that uh, based on his current ADP. Yeah, for the people who pick him up mid-season. No, for... (laughs) Hey, I I didn't say anything about anything. Whatever. (laughs) Uh, But no, regardless, uh, you know, Bobby, we've talked... We talked about this on yesterday's podcast, okay? I want you to explain to me and tell me something, anything, that Damian Williams does better than Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. No, there's nothing. No, there's nothing at all. So, Not a single thing. So why are you willing to die on this hill? Because you think Andy Reid's dumb? Well, was he dumb when he benched LaShawn McCoy for the first half of the season after he drafted him with a top 50 pick? He didn't bench him. He just worked him into the Well, I, he that... started four games, dude. He started four games. LaShawn McCoy. He was I, awesome, too. I get that. But I'm saying is like, was Brian Westbrook still on the team when, when McCoy was drafted in the second round? Let me take a look. He may have been. I want to know what other running back was on the roster at that point because I didn't Leonard, look back to that. Leonard Weaver was second in, in carries. Who else was on the team? Was Brian Westbrook, Westbrook on the team? Yeah, Brian Westbrook. So maybe he got and hurt. they had McNabb. Maybe he got hurt, and that's what led to McCoy getting more of a role. I, I would need to go back and look at those game logs. But what I'm saying is that the, yeah, Damian Westbrook Williams Westbrook had eight 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 games played. I want to share some. I was tell, I was talking to Yates before the show. We were waiting on Bobby to get in the room, and. Uh, I brought up an article that I wrote way back in January, and one of my it was very early bold predictions. And as Yates mentioned, these are tough things for us to do because we're 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 so like we think of all the different scenarios that could play out, and it's really tough to be hot takey. But my number eight prediction was that the Chiefs draft a running back and that he finishes as a top fifteen option. And I said my words. I don't even care who the running back is at this point, but the Chiefs right. are going to draft one, and he's going to walk into the starting job. I say this because Clyde, and, they were and, trying to replace Williams all year last year, weren't they? Well, that's what I'm saying. They were giving 31 year old LaShawn McCoy 10 to 12 right. carries per game when he yeah. was like extremely inefficient. He could barely yeah. move. He was not LaShawn McCoy anymore. And I know the playoffs, Damian Williams. Do you guys remember Andy Reid was extremely frustrated with Damian Williams and the fact that he couldn't get back on the field like a hamstring injury in preseason? Yeah, yeah. And I think that played into the season. I, I don't think Andy But then Reed, he almost won Super Bowl MVP. Well, right, correct. But he Well, they don't win that. No, Well, he should have in a way, but the, the question is, most valuable player, do they win that game without Patrick Mahomes? The answer is no. So Yeah, I mean, if you replace Damian Williams with LaShawn McCoy, they still win that game. Correct. That's how I feel about it. Yeah. Uh, but what I'm saying is that now on top, I said that he would finish his top 15 off, offense, and I didn't care who the running back was. It just so happens that it was my number one running back coming into the draft. I loved Clyde Edwards-Hilaire before he was drafted by the yes, Chiefs. He I, he's he's Ray Rice-esque, you know what I mean? And if you put that into an Andy Reid offense, a guy that can catch 80 balls if you need him to, like Kareem Hunt was someone that... I don't think anybody expected to take over like he did in that offense. But now that you have all the speed on the field with Tyreek Hill, you have Sammy Watkins out there who may not be good anymore, but whatever. You have Miko Hardman. You have Travis Kelsey. Clyde Edwards Hilaire, people talked about the fact that LSU, he he basically had Joe Burrow. He had all these wide receivers taking away attention. He's facing six, seven man fronts. The same exact thing is going to happen in the NFL. And Andy Reid right. has proven time and right. time again that he's going to give you a consistent RB1 outside of the last couple of years because he really just didn't have that guy. You know who he reminds me of is a young Devonta Freeman, who was awesome. I mean, he's a re- Clyde edwards hilaire is a really good football player. He's I'm not more of a that. he's more I just of don't a tackle think he gets breaker. 200 touches. Like Devonta Freeman wasn't necessarily a guy that could break tackles. He was shifty, but yeah, like uh, edwards hilaire will break tackles. Yates, are you with me on this one? Oh yeah, completely. He'll make you miss in a phone booth. Yep. Yeah, uh, Yates and I are gonna have an, uh, a fight over an article. About Clyde Edwards Hilaire and where we've got him. Can we, see a, can we hear a preview of it right now? Yates, Yates has him like number one. I've got him like number 20. <laughs> <laughs> number one. No, I think Yates is pretty much in line with ADP, maybe a little bit higher. I know I'm the low man on uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire. And uh, no, we're going to keep moving tags, okay? You guys can you guys can read that article. I've already, I talked about Clyde Edwards Hilaire for like five minutes yesterday when we weren't even talking about him. So uh, it's my turn. And here we go. You guys ready for this? Y'all ready We're for We're sticking this? with the Chargers. Justin Jackson is going to out-touch Austin Eckler. What? He's going to out-touch Austin Eckler? Did he die? He's going to out-touch Austin Eckler. Justin Jackson's moving into the <laughs> Melvin he Gordon die? role, guys. Austin Eckler is staying in the Austin Eckler role. I don't even know if I believe that Justin Jackson's going to out-touch Josh Kelly. 
Correct. I know you don't believe that, but you're wrong. Here, <laughs> I'm checking out mockdraftable.com, okay? You guys know what that website is where you punch in uh, a player's Is this where you're going to tell says, me that he's like Lamar Jackson again? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Justin Jackson's better than Lamar Jackson, okay? Oh, Listen word. to this. Okay, so you punch in Justin Jackson, and it says, okay, here's the guys with the most comparable combine scores, builds, everything like that. That way you can get a mold, the type of player he is. Number one most comparable player on the board to Justin Jackson is Christian McCaffrey, 5'11", 199 pounds. Christian McCaffrey, 5'11", 199 pounds. Now, obviously, McCaffrey's put on a little bit of extra weight. Justin Jackson has put on a little bit of extra weight. Um, Guys, Justin Jackson, when you watch him play, the number one rated running back in pro football focus, he is amazing. You want to talk about making someone miss in a phone booth. He's quicker than Clyde Edwards Hilaire. This guy is nuts on tape. The Chargers have to see that. When he got the start last year, what'd he do? He reeled off over 100 yards. Easy. Dude, dude, you just, hold on, hold on. Let's let's re- rewind for a moment. Uh, we're gonna go back to legitimately the start of last year when Melvin Gordon was holding out. Okay, it's the same exact coaching stuff. Staff, nothing's changed, and they did not give him carries. They didn't give him touches. They didn't do it. They gave it to Austin Eckler, and then when Gordon came back, they split him up. They, it's the same coaching staff that legitimately just drafted a running back to take that role, and. They, they they love jo- Joshua Kelly apparently. I'm not sitting here arguing with you the fact that he Justin Jackson might be a little bit underrated by the Chargers coaching staff, but it doesn't matter. What matters is how they feel about him and how they feel about him. They have clearly told us time and time and again. I again I don't think that he's a bad running back. Comparing him to Christian McCaffrey's dumb, but this is going to be. A, <laughs> I wasn't actually comparing him to Christian McCaffrey. Just so you guys know, you okay, mentioned them in the out. same breath, which is wrong. But, hey, dude, I'm just reading off the internet, okay? It's mockdraftable.com. <laughs> I'm just reading off the internet. Yates, when you just tell him he's wrong? Uh, Bobby, 50, when this happens, you guys are going to poop right in your pants. 50 rush attempts in 2018. 15 receptions in 2018. 29 rush attempts in 2019. You know and the only person who had more yards per carry than Justin Jackson? He did Lamar it on Jackson. 29 carries. <laughs> he was awesome, dude. Every time he touched the ball, he was, he was awesome making on the if, I give, if I put you at running back... Well, I'm a world I put you at running holder, back, man. I do better than carries. Lamar Jackson, too. <laughs> You'll run backwards. If I give you five <laughs> carries and you average five yards per carry, are you going to tell me that you average more... Yards per like you that you could do if better I average back. five yards per carry in the NFL, I'd tell everyone <laughs> every minute of the day. Let's keep moving though. You guys are wrong. <laughs> I'm right. Tat- Justin get Jackson. I'm I gonna have all the shares carry. and you guys are gonna be jealous. Oh uh, okay. Yates um, number three. <laughs> well, Tags and I Tags and I apparently needed to uh brief before the podcast because uh I'm just gonna present this without commentary. Clyde Edwards Hilaire will finish as a top five running back in twenty twenty. All right, next point. Mm-hmm. Tags, you're up, buddy. All right. So my number three. Yeah, you can get another one going at the very. You can have six. You can put yours at the very oh, end of the play. I don't have six. So. I'm crying. <laughs> I'll give you an extra one. I've got a lot of them. Oh, I'm crying after hearing Justin Jackson. And so no, yeah, it's, so that that was Bobby's number four. <laughs> I know. I mean, no, I actually that was that was spicy. my number two. I moved it up since we were talking about the Chargers. I wasn't quite ready for my number four. Okay, there I was, was like, wow. Stat Ooh, Where do we go yeah. from here, Bobby? All right. So my number three is that DK Metcalf finishes as a top twelve wide receiver ahead like of AJ Brown, who is being drafted nine wide receivers in front of him. Okay, I, I like that. <laughs> yeah, I know. that could happen. Sure. Yeah, I mean, let, let's pretend that. Wait, that, text, that t- this is a hot take episode, man. Well, let's. Pre- <laughs> <laughs> I'm just well, kidding. I'm not drafting DK Metcalf there, but like, there is a legitimate chance that's going to happen. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like, you start looking at wide receivers and trying to predict which ones are going to break out, which ones have that top 12 potential. And it's an article that I do every year. It's about team scoring and what it means to fantasy football. Now, the the Seahawks defense has. I think we can all agree it's worse than it's ever been. They've lost everyone, and that, that front seven is even going downhill. They're going to lose Clowney here at some point. Is he, is he signing with the Titans? Did he sign with the Titans? It no, seems like I think him and Taylor Lewan agent. have been talking. I don't know. But that that defense is not very good. They just lost their starting cornerback that they signed in free agents in Quinton Dunbar. That guy was apparently like he's going to – he got arrested. He's, he went to jail. Like he's, he's getting suspended by the NFL. That's happening. He might be in jail. I don't know. Uh – But that defense is going to be crappy, and Russell Wilson is finally going to throw the ball a little bit. And even if we get a slight bump in this, DK Metcalf was a guy we saw in the playoffs. He just kind of took over the game. Uh, If this guy 
everybody said in the draft process, if, if DK Metcalf is someone who can learn the route tree and he could develop as a wide receiver, his ceiling is Calvin Johnson-esque. And, you know, we saw as the year went on, DK was great. And he was, again, a raw wide receiver who had a knee surgery. He had a, he had to have his knee cleaned out right before the start of the season. I don't know if you guys remember that. They didn't get to play, he didn't get to play in the preseason. He wasn't even expected to play in week one, but then he did. And DK Metcalf finished with nine games over 60 yards. That was the 10th most in the NFL among wide receivers. So he's already ascending. He has Russell Wilson. Tyler Lockett is not a guy that's going to see 140 targets. You know, if this offense is really going to take off and start throwing the ball a little bit more, you have to look at who else is on the roster. DK Metcalf is a, is a monster, and uh, he's a magnet. When the ball's when a ball is thrown his way, which Russell Wilson does extremely well, he's a magnet with his hands, with those massive hands. So uh, DK, I, I love him. If you can get him in Dynasty on – I'm not. You're not going to get him cheap, but if you can get him right now for cheaper than say wide receiver 16 levels, I'm buying DK. Here's my problem with this hot take. And Yates, I'm speaking for you too. No, you're not. <laughs> you said you said DK Metcalf instead of Calvin Ridley. Why? What is your problem, Tags? Wait, who said that? No, you said uh, AJ. You Brown. said DK Metcalf. You said Wait, DK Metcalf. You should have. This should have been a Calvin AJ Ridley Brown. hot take. I said AJ Brown. No, you, you just gave a, a DK Metcalf. I really wish that Hot someone take. would hit the rewind button and then send yeah. it to Bobby because Yates heard me correctly. Bobby heard yeah. what he wanted to hear. He said I would take DK Metcalf over AJ Brown, who's going nine right. spots ahead of him. I agree. I'm saying you did a hot take on DK Metcalf. Why waste a hot take when you could have done one on Calvin Ridley? Because I know that Yates is going to do that. <laughs> is that true, Yates? Uh, no, I actually don't have Calvin Ridley. Oh, I left him off. Well, I could wow. Use, I could see, use. I was I right see. again, just like Justin Jackson. I have a list of eight things, and I put I put Ridley on there, finishes as <laughs> a top ten wide receiver, but I didn't want to take it yeah. from Yates. And by the way, yeah. I've already, I already put That's that more article. likely than Metcalf. Than if you were if 10. you were to do a Google search right now, you can see before it was the cool thing to do. <laughs> I did an article saying early 2020 bold predictions. It was published on January 9th of this year. So legit right after the fantasy season. My number one on that list was that Calvin Ridley pulls a Chris Godwin and overtakes Julio Jones as the top no, receiver. No, that, oh, that's crazy. Get out of here. But That's not happening. I, I, again, that's really bold. But this could be a 1A, 1B situation like a Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Yeah, but Calvin Ridley's the one B because Julio Jones is. Well, the Julio 1A. Jones is one of the goats. So I, I, well, I'm gonna I, yes, but Julio Jones is also yeah. 31 years old. I want to okay. go back. I want to go back to DK really quick because this is to go along with Tags's point. Check this out. So DK Metcalf had 17 targets inside the red zone last year. Like that is towards the top of the NFL. His catch rate on those targets was 29.41%. He, had, he reeled in five receptions for 47 yards and four touchdowns. If that number comes up, if his catch rate comes up to even 50%, and he sees around the same number of red zone targets, double-digit touchdowns. He's easy. Des Bryant. He's Des Bryant, guys. Yeah. Uh, we've talked about Wait this before. What? He's not Des Bryant. He could be Des Bryant is what I'm saying. If he does, if he, he could be better. step in his game. He could be better than Des Bryant. Yes. Yeah. He's not Calvin Johnson, though. I already fought you on that, though, so we won't go there. Here's my number three. Dallas Goddard outproduces a healthy Zach Ertz this year. Wait, Dallas Goddard? Dallas outproduces Goddard. Outproduces Zach Ertz. Outproduces a healthy Zach Ertz this year. Mm-mm. I ain't that <laughs> That's just his response. From week six uh -oh. on, Dallas Goddard had 102 fantasy points. Zach Ertz had 117. He was right. Well, I know, but they were playing him. the same amount of snaps because they had all dead wide receivers. They weren't playing the same amount of snaps, man. They Zach pretty Ertz much was were. playing an extra 20% snaps. They were pretty much playing the same. And that's the difference. In, actually, Dallas Goddard was more efficient and effective than Zach Ertz. When he had the ball thrown his way, it wasn't even particularly close. But Goddard is not going to get on the field nearly as much this year. That's the problem. Yeah. Well, Dallas Goddard's the better football player. <clears throat> They're not so gonna yeah, going to bench Zach Ertz. That's the point. He's going to pass Zach Ertz because he's a better football player. Mm. Zach Ertz is 30 years old. He might be better all around, but I don't think he's. I don't, I don't know if I want to say that he's a... No, there are very few tight ends in the NFL who are better receivers than Zach Ertz. Right. And one of them is Dallas Goddard. No, <laughs> um, no, I think that the path for Dallas Goddard last year was there because, like Tags mentioned, I mean, guys like J.J. Arthega, Whiteside, Greg Ward on the field. Now you're adding in Deshaun Jackson back healthy, Jalen Rager, Marquise Goodwin if he's going to be there, John Hightower, uh, you know, Quez Watkins. I, I think he's more of a punt returner than anything else. But, like, you know, the path there for Dallas Goddard to get the type of targets I don't think is there. The argument could be made because – 
it, news came out yesterday or the day before, all these days kind of blend together at this point, that Elshon Jeffrey has no timetable for a return. So at that point, then you're talking about, well, Dallas Goddard could be on the field more than we anticipate. And Zach, but I think that more of those targets are going to go Zach Ertz's way. So I think that there's an argument to be made there. I don't think that I want to go as bold to say that he's going to outproduce Zach Ertz. I don't have him projected that way, but he is a very, very good football player. I will give you that. He's the man. Yates, number two. Let's keep moving. Um, all right. Jonu Smith will finish as a top three tight end in 2020. So behind Dallas Goddard. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, it's very difficult for me to put him ahead of Travis Kelsey, George Kittle. I don't think that that comes. I don't think he comes anywhere close to that. But there is a significant drop off, guys, in my projections from uh, Kittle and Kelsey to then number three, which is Mark Andrews. So I think that you could be looking at some regression from Mark Andrews from a touchdown perspective. If we do right. project that Lamar Jackson is going to take a step backwards, Zach Ertz. Okay, well, now we're talking about Dallas Goddard entering in. We're talking about more competition for targets. I have Hayden Hurst around that range. And then there's kind of just a bunch of unknowns, right? There are a bunch of guys that are completely unknown. If you look at this Tennessee offense, where are the targets going to go besides A.J. Brown? Like Corey Davis. Corey Davis, but Corey <laughs> Davis hasn't done anything up to this point in his career to warrant Ryan Tannehill feel feeling comfortable throwing the ball his way. Adam Humphrey. Remember that one time when he scored two touchdowns about against Stephon Gilmore? <laughs> that one time. <laughs> That's all we have yeah, to go off camp. of. <laughs> What's that, Tex? Remember that one time at band camp? <laughs> uh, and then you have, but Jonu Smith has always been tucked behind Delaney Walker. And we've always been, we've always seen Johnu Smith and the talent level and be like and just go like get him on the field give him yep. more targets and it hasn't happened now there is an actual path for this to happen and I think Johnu Smith is set to explode this season. For all the people saying that's impossible, I want to remind you of some things that were not possible this time last year. Lamar Jackson outscoring everyone by ten billion points. Darren Waller finishing in the top three tight ends. DJ Chark breaking out and being one of the top five wide receivers for half the season. Cooper Cup finishing as the wide receiver four, despite doing nothing in the second half. I mean, how many times do these absolutely absurd things have to happen for us to realize that, yeah, a lot of this stuff is possible? Yeah, Jonu Smith is a good, fo- good football good. player. And if yeah. you remember, uh, Bill Belichick, dur- before their matchup against the Titans, said that he's one of the best tight ends in the league. And yeah. that's that's high praise from the best coach ever. Yeah. All right, Tags, it's over to you for number two. All right, I'm just going to let you guys argue this one out afterwards because I'm. this is where I'm going to get people pissed at me. Uh, <laughs> Aaron Rodgers finishes as a top three fantasy quarterback again. Like sure. he's like he's done like 80% of the times that he's played an actual season. And, um, you know, Matt LaFleur may be an idiot, but I, I cannot believe that anyone <laughs> – would stoop to the level of taking the ball to Aaron Rodgers' hands more. I don't think that I don't think they're good enough to do it, to be honest with you. And you know, we have to we do have to remember that Aaron Rodgers was playing his entire career under Mike McCarthy and then he goes to a new head coach and, you know, he it's learning a new offense, right? And that may have taken that may have taken some time. It, it takes time for him to develop chemistry with his wide receivers. They didn't really change the wide receivers this year. Um, obviously, we wish they would have added some more more talented, but uh, Devonte Adams should be healthy. Uh, Alan Lazard was someone that proved that he can garner some trust out of Rodgers. Uh, he Rodgers has never finished worse than the QB nine, which is saying something. Uh, like right. in terms of like that's his absolute floor. He's in the prime of his career. He's not on the he's not in the downturn of his career. If anything, Aaron Rodgers is the type of dude that. He's probably going to be pissed, and and the fact that and like just saying, okay, probably. you guys want to draft a quarterback, let him sit on the bench. Like this is what I do, and I think at some point, you know, you have to do that as a quarterback. And I think that these guys need that mindset. Rodgers has been coasting a little bit over the last few years, and it's it's the reason that I think Bobby and I have conceded in the fact that you know Tom Brady's the goat and all that. But Rodgers is no, I will not. Is ever still Rodgers is still the most arena. talented quarterback that I've ever watched play. Uh, yeah. Now is has he played too scared over the last couple of years? Yes. And, and would I would I deem him the, the greatest of all time right now? No, I wouldn't. Uh, but I, I he is still uber talented, and uh, Aaron Jones is still there. Obviously, as a receiver, Jay Sternberger is going to be an upgrade over Jimmy Graham. I really don't care what anybody says about that. Um, and again, but this is this is a hot take show, and Aaron Rodgers. I don't even know why it's considered a hot take to say that he can finish as a top three quarterback. I hope he does because I'm tired of seeing people just talk crap about him, like he's just not a good football player, like they do with Odell Beckham. Like I don't think people appreciate greatness anymore if it didn't happen in the last like ten months. Can we all agree to just give Aaron Rodgers, Antonio Brown, Josh Gordon, maybe they could trade for AJ Green too? 
I would have taken AJ Green. I think that would have been perfect. But I mean, it is oh, what it is. And, sweet, dude. But I mean, regardless, are, are, are Aaron you guys with me in the fact it. that he's like that. It just does it tick you guys off that people just forget how great sometimes like the players actually are. Oh, completely. And yeah, I think yeah. that yeah, there is there is a lot of recency bias that comes into our evaluations. And I think I think it's trying to get some people are trying to get ahead of the curve where we're looking at Aaron Rodgers and we're saying he's on the downturn of his career and well they wouldn't have drafted a quarterback if he wasn't, right. you know, what he was 3 years ago. Well, guys, sometimes sometimes teams do stupid things and they draft a quarterback who <laughs> you know is there to sit behind the behind one of the greatest pure throwers of the football in NFL history. I think that that's the conversation, that's the delineation between Tom Brady who is the greatest quarterback of all time. I yeah. think he's the GOAT based on what he has done and you can't dispute six championships. However, when you change the terminology and you say the best quarterback in terms of like pure arm talent, throwing throw over the football, that belongs to Aaron Rodgers. I think he's completely underrated. Right. So and Brady aspect. agreed. Brady said he'd throw for 6,000 yards with Belichick. Right, right. So, uh, you know, I think that that's that's a conversation. I don't know if I want to go as bold as to say a QB three finish because I think that they have to throw the ball a lot more. He mm -hmm. has to do it with historic efficiency, you know, to finish as a QB as the QB three or higher based on what you're saying tags. And I just mm -hmm. don't think he has the weapons to do it. But if that is the case, if you are, if you are saying that there is a path for this to happen, then it screams that there are other players in this offense to buy outside of Devonte Adams. And that could be Alan Lazard and it could be Jay Sternberger. He's got an eight to one touchdown to interception ratio over the last two years. And you talk about, you know, recency bias, pretty much all it comes down to with Aaron Rodgers. He hasn't been bad. It's his touchdown rate. If you look at his touchdown rate the past two years, 4.4 before then it was 6.4. That's crazy. Okay. So if you bring him up to his career touchdown rate, 6.4 last year, guess what? He finishes as the QB two because that's an extra 12 touchdowns guys. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, I and I don't even know if I anticipate him going there because again, they didn't change many of the weapons. But we do we can't take for granted like learning an offense and going through. I, again, Matt Lafleur's off season strategy has been pathetic. Um, that's for the best way for me to describe it. But uh, again, you know, I, I I don't like to bet against talent like Aaron Rodgers. All right, let's see here. Man, I had my next one up. Okay, I'm gonna skip that one. I'm gonna save it for number one. Uh, here's my number two. Paris Campbell is going to finish as a wide receiver two in the Colts' number one wide receiver. I think the second part of your statement has a chance of happening. I don't know if that's going to equate to a wide receiver two finish. Uh, T.Y. Hilton right now is uh, he's turning 31 years old during the season. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't very good last year. He had 500 yards. Yeah. Well, he was hurt. He, he played, was hurt. Sure. Yeah, he, he hasn't played pulled. a full. He hasn't played a full season since 2017. Yeah, he had Jacoby Brissett last year. 39 year old Philip Rivers may be an upgrade, but regardless, I think that Paris Campbell is a tags. We talked about it last year, uh, before Paris Campbell was you know dealing with the injury. He's a bigger, faster version of T.Y. Hilton, and I think we finally get to see that this year. Yeah, I mean, th he's going to be playing the slot a lot. They talked about Pittman being the X, and uh, Hilton has not played the slot very much with Frank Reich there. So uh, Phillip Rivers, over the course of his career, he's loved his tight ends. He loved his, like those guys over the middle of the field. If you go back to like Eddie Royal, uh, he made him something oh, geez, uh, while they were Eddie the Royal. Chargers. That's like a name to bring back from the past. But Keenan Allen, obviously, was someone that was targeted a lot. And, uh, you know, I do like Pittman as a candidate for like a sleeper for like maybe like eight touchdowns. Sure. I think it's very possible that Pittman can lead this team in touchdowns. But uh, T.Y. Hilton is towards the end of his career. I don't think that he's going to be as great as he used to be. Uh, when doing projections, I thought that Paris Campbell might f have more room for production, but I'm just struggling to find it uh, because Zach Pascal's going to get on the field because they do run a lot of four wide receiver sets. Um, so it it's just more about opportunity. I like Paris Campbell. And is there a chance at a breakout? Absolutely. Uh, but in my projections, he came in as their number three receiver. All right, it's over to you, Yates. Number one, make it spicy, baby. Number one. Allen Robinson will finish as the wide receiver one in 2020. Oh, are they signing Brett Favre? <laughs> <laughs> I went back. I went back and was doing some uh, film study the other night, and I was watching Allen Robinson on Game Pass. And guys, he's so good. His ability to create separation at all levels of the field. He's a smooth route runner. I think he's one of the more underrated wide receivers in the entire NFL. And I think that. And then so I. 
studied Allen Robinson, right? I watched some Allen Robinson tape from last year, and then I went back and watched some Nick Foles tape from from last year and the year before when he was with the Eagles. And his ability, what I was looking for when watching Nick Foles was how quickly can he process the offense, how or process the defense, excuse me, how quickly can he go through his reads? And what I saw was a high proficiency in the, that area, which is something that Mitch Trubisky just could not do. He locked onto his first read. If it wasn't there, he was going to learn. He was going to tuck it and run. Nick Foles consistently went off of his first read and went to the next one and was able to get the ball out quickly to the open receiver. He is going. Nick Foles is going to thrive in this Matt Nagy offense if he becomes a starter, which I am projecting. If that's the case, then there is going. The offense is going to be on the field more than it was last year, guys. Allen Robinson had 98 receptions last year, and that was with the offense coming off the field every four downs. So I think that if you do have more trips into the red zone, more plays in the middle of the field, that is more targets to go Al Robinson's way. Nick Foles is not an idiot. He's going to be looking at a talented wide receiver who is going to be always open. Allen Robinson certainly has the ceiling to finish as the wide receiver one. I think that he is one of the top six or seven wide receivers in the NFL. I don't think that the, I mean, I guess touchdowns can make anyone ceiling, not anyone, but any of the top 15 wide receivers ceiling the wide receiver one. Like if Allen Robinson gets 15 touchdowns, yeah, it could happen. Absolutely. But I, I don't know if the volume is quite going to be there or the efficiency because of the quarterback play. Tags, do you think this one is possible? I mean, he'd have to score seventy five percent of the Bears' touchdowns in order to get to fifteen touchdowns. Um, <laughs> the, you know, but re- realistically, I've been going through some data recently uh, for an article that I do on on how much team scoring matters, and I'm going to bring this up because Yates, the Bears last year, they were bottom five in terms of team scoring, right? Like overall points. Do you say that they get into the top 18 this year? I think where were they? Do you have the data in front of you on where they were in 2018? 2018, I want to say that they were 14th or something like that. Yeah, that's what. So with the Chicago Bears offense this year, that's what I'm trying to figure out is I'm trying to look back and say, do I just completely throw out 2019's data and look at 2018's? Because that's when we saw this offense actually moving and clicking where Trubisky was actually able to move the offense. And well, that's so, when the offense was actually creative and not... Right, right. But then, you know, and it builds on itself, right? If you can't complete one pass, you're not going to be able to build off of that look to then create, you know, be creative with your looks and other things like that. Yeah. So, you know, this offense, I think, is going to get back to one of the more creative offenses in the NFL if Nick Foles is the quarterback. And if you can simply just move the offense, that's all you have to do. We're not sitting here saying that Nick Foles has to be a top 15 quarterback in the NFL. I don't mm-hmm. think he has the ceiling for that. Now, can he be clutch in, in certain games? Absolutely, we've seen it. But I think that he has the ability to execute an offense. And with a defense like Chicago's, that's all you need. You just simply need to be able to execute the offense. And from there, Matt Nagy will be able to build upon it. I think that we need to completely throw out 2019 from our minds. Yeah, it's tough to do just because of how bad things were. Um, but the reason I was bringing that up, because 83% of top six and top 12, actually, uh, wide receivers in the NFL or fantasy, in fantasy football come from top 18 scoring offenses. The odds of a wide receiver finishing as a wide receiver one, like not not the wide receiver one, like top 12. The odds is it literally it's it's a 10% chance, 10.4% chance. Um, I think there's only been 11 players over the last eight years who have been on a bottom 10 scoring offense and finished as a top 12 wide receiver. Hmm. It's crazy. All right, guys. Here's my last one, and I actually should have saved this for number one. Hold on, so wait, I'm hold on, wait. Gonna... If your wait, if yours is that hot, should I do mine first? I forgot. I was just so excited about mine that I was ready to skip. <laughs> I'm gonna let you go at last because I, 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 I have that... talked myself into this player so much over the off season, like more and more every week. And at this point, doing this episode and looking up these stats, I'm just like, oh my lanta! I am drafting this guy everywhere. Hmm. I'm so pumped. Well, and everyone is going to hate me for saying it, but that's fine. I'll take all the shares. Tags you up. <laughs> all right. My number one, I, uh, I previewed this on another show uh, because I came up with it. I was so proud of it, and it's something that I haven't talked about on this show, so I'm going to bring it up, and I'm going to say, number one, every Cincinnati Bengals skill position player, 
outperforms their ADP. Yes, you're exactly right. Yep. Oh, man, you're exactly right. This offense is going to be great. Yep. Joe Burrow is currently, um, he's outside the top 15 quarterbacks. Uh, Joe Mixon will beat the RB7 ADP that he has. AJ Green is going to beat the R- the wide receiver 28 ADP. Tyler Boyd going to beat the wide receiver 32. John Ross is going to beat, well, undrafted. Yeah. Um, T. Higgins, I don't consider him a starter because I actually don't think that he's going to get much playing time. Uh, but even C.J. Uzama, undrafted. But that's basically saying every starter on the Bengals offense at their ADP is going to be undervalued. So guys, I've got a player who just turned 27 years old. He was drafted in the top five. He was the leading uh, points per game guy in the playoffs for his team. In the seven healthy games he played last year, he was fifth in the league in targets, top 10 in fantasy points. And then during the playoffs, he proceeded to be the number two fantasy wide receiver behind Devontae Adams. And he is going virtually undrafted. Oh, by the way, his quarterback is the best quarterback in the world. Who am I talking about? Corey Davis. Sammy Watkins is going to be what? a top 20 fantasy football wide receiver. Hmm. I mean, I was I was willing to get on that train last year, but I'm done. I'm, I'm well, so he started d- off awesome, man. He was a top one 10 week. fantasy football one player game. in the first, hold on, first hold on. seven it, weeks he played. No, 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 Five for thirty-nine guys. He was top five in targets Are in you, those South like, seriously weeks. bragging about a five and thir- five receptions for <laughs> I'm saying yards. all of all of that, that adds line? up to a top ten fantasy football player, <laughs> top ten fantasy football wide receiver in that. But time. he wasn't. No, no. Take away week one. So you said through seven weeks, right? Yeah. So what, what did he one. rank weeks two through seven? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, just a second. Let me do this because we could do this. I guess say Deshaun Jackson was the number one fantasy wide receiver in 2019. Uh, I could say John Ross. John Ross was actually a better receiver than him over the first two weeks. Because Ross had back-to-back over 110-yard games. Well, I'll say this. In those <laughs> weeks two through seven, <laughs> He's not gonna give he was better us. than Allen Robinson too. and I'm Calvin Ridley. Suckers. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> He's not going to give it to us. I it was it. bad. It was bad. Wow. I that week one was so dang good. Yeah, he had that... three touchdowns and 100 and... Uh, I mean, he was, still a, he was still a wide receiver three, though, guys. Um, and and the th- you can't just take away that week one. It happened. It happened. But I oh mean, my since word! And then the playoffs happened. Oh my happened. word! Sammy Watkins weeks two through seven last year and a half PPR was a wide receiver eighty three. What what are you talking about? What? Oh no no he he didn't play in week five because he was hurt man. Oh okay. Yeah. So and regardless, but Sammy Watkins was very good in the playoffs. He got a ton of targets while he was healthy last year. He's got a great. Um, you know, a great draft draft capital profile. He was drafting the top five. He's got the best quarterback in the league. He's starting. I mean, Tyreek Hill's there, but he's starting. Yeah. I'm drafting um, him. I mean, I I can see this happening. I really can. I'm not willing to – I mean, if you take him with, one, like, one of your last picks, whatever. But I don't know if you're going to get him that late. But right. – I definitely tried to make this argument last year because it made sense to draft him, especially knowing all the stuff that was going on with Tyreek Hill and the off the field question marks, and right. then finding out that Tyreek Hill, he got he, like he actually did miss time at the beginning of the year, not because of the suspension, but because of uh, getting because he got hurt. Uh, so yeah, I I definitely could see this avenue to happen. I just don't know if I want to bet on it. So I, I actually drafted don't. wide receiver fifty eight. Your I'm Justin Jackson take would have been the best 42. one, by the way, for number one. No, that's not true. That one's that's a gimme. <laughs> I'm drafting all the Justin Jackson and Sammy Watkins. Oh man! Um, you know what, guys? We've got a little bit of extra time, so I just want to debate this with you, okay? Oh, oh. who is the most likely underdog MVP candidate? I'll go Russell Wilson guys... because he's never even he's never right. even received a vote. Yeah, but it. that's not like an underdog, man. He's like top five most likely to do it. He's never got a vote. Like, okay, La- last year Lamar Jackson was plus. 7,000. The year before that, Patrick Mahomes plus 6,000. Who's a guy in that range who could do it? I already said my guy. It's Ryan Tannehill. Well, it's a quarterback. Yeah. That's just what this. Maybe Carson Wentz? Carson Wentz is like 1,800, man. 
I don't have the odds in front of me. I don't have the odds in front of me either. Carson Wentz is plus 2,000. So let me give you a few guys in that range from plus 5,000 to plus 10,000. Okay. Josh Allen plus 5,000. Matthew Stafford plus 5,000. Matt Ryan plus 5,000. Big Ben. Philip Rivers plus 6,000. Uh, Daniel Jones plus 6,600. Kirk Cousins 6,600. Jarrett Stidham 6,600. Stidham's that. Stidham has higher odds to win it than Ryan Tannehill. Drew Locke plus 7,000. Derek Carr, Jared Goff plus 8,000. Tannehill plus 8,000. Let's see here. Sam Darnold plus 10,000. Teddy Bridgewater. I choose none of the above. If I had to choose any of them, it would be Matt Ryan. Yeah, same. Yeah, that's the name I was five thousand or he was five thousand plus five thousand. He's played it. Because we already saw him put up one of the best MVP seasons. Yeah, and he's Um, got a dynamic offense this year if Todd Gurley can stay healthy. mm -hmm. Okay, let's do one more then. Okay, instead of MVP odds, um, let's go with Rookie of the Year. So obviously, you guys think it's going to be Clyde edwards hilaire Mm -hmm. but who's a sleeper guy that you think could do it besides AJ Dillon? Obviously. (laughs) <laughs> <Just> um, <laughs> I actually don't think it's going to be Clyde edwards Hiller. I think it'll be Joe Burrow. Um, yeah, that's probably right. Outside of a, a I'm sorry, sleeper. I meant fantasy MVP. The fantasy? Yeah, fantasy MVP. Oh, who's a Who dark could, horse? Yeah, who's a dark horse to be Jalen Rager? Dude? Are you talking about a rookie <laughs> fantasy MVP? A rookie or? fantasy MVP. Okay, okay. Um... Like, Rager think J.K. Me? Dobbins could just take over this job for Mark Andrews? That could be. Because if he does in that offense. Keyshawn Vaughn is the other one who I think is a super dark horse to be that fantasy MVP. I think that he has a very real chance. We've talked, <laughs> well, we've talked about Vaughn, but I think that he does have a real shot if he wins that starting job. Well, I mean, I'm thinking about, like, Alshon Jeffrey. They're saying that they don't even have a – estimated date that he's gonna be back so it's it's real questionable that he might start the season on the pup list you have deshaun sure. jackson who I, I i like as a player but we can't forget the fact that he's like well over 30 he's he's right. at the end of his career uh he's not a guy that's going to demand 100 targets so you start looking around this team and saying okay um you know we saw greg ward produced on the the stretch so uh jalen rager is a guy that could be like a very um, a good call like a terry mclaurin type impact in his fantasy year uh, Chad and, Johnson said he absolutely loves him, and you can say what you want about Chad Johnson. Well, Chad Johnson's was, uh, been saying he loves everyone, by the way. He said the same thing about Ruggs is going to dominate Vegas. He started talking about A.J. Brown. I'm like, well, no. if you throw out enough names there, of course. I, just, I didn't hear that. I only heard the Jalen Rager one. Yeah. And, I mean, Chad Johnson, like, he's a character, but he really knows his football, man. He was a supreme route runner. One of the one of the better route runners, yeah. Yeah. Um, what about Antonio Gibson? Yates, this is the name you threw no. around. You think there's a chance that he starts the season – as a three-down bell cow back for Washington. No, no, because he's going to be utilized differently. He's going to be, I think, he's going to be utilized as somewhat the, of the slot receiver in that offense to then a third-down back. I think that's how that's how he was used at Memphis. He was utilized all around the formation. So I yeah. think that that's kind of what they're going to use him for, uh, and potentially some carries in between the tackles because he's, he's explosive and he can. He's proven that he can take any run to the house, but. I think that uh, he needs to be – he's going to have to be on a, a good football team. And I don't, I think Washington is a decent football team this year. I don't think that they're going to be finishing with a second overall pick again, but I don't think that they're going to be you know a top 15 team. And here's the final hot take is that um, Ryan Tannehill is going to whoop Joe Burrow, so Tags is going to have to wear jorts for you all to see. Does that no, sound we, haven't, good, we, haven't, we haven't come up with the terms to that. We, we haven't, but dude, I want to make Bobby sing because one of the things that Bobby doesn't want to do, he doesn't want to do anything like super embarrassing. And I think seeing Bobby sing would be super embarrassing. And so we need to make something just, like that. This happen. is going to be just like the combine thing where I set a world record. They're probably like, you know, I'm going to win American Idol, even though I never go on the show. And you're <laughs> no, just going to be really, Bobby's like be first, another win for me. Bobby's version of a punishment is like, make me eat like sweet potatoes i'm like i ain't gonna get any enjoyment out dude, of that no, i'm not eating sweet potatoes get out of here dude <laughs> Yuck. you guys are nasty all right that's all for today's show uh guys thank you uh for not blasting me too hard on justin jackson i know you guys really wanted to i mean i'm not i'm not conceding you guys are wrong um but thank you for for being kind you guys used to make fun of me a little bit too much <laughs> oh there's more to come about me don't worry yeah All right, well, we'll see about that. All right, guys, that's all for today's show. Don't forget that we've got giveaways going on right now. I'm trying to find them right now. I'm stalling here. Um, We've got giveaways going on right now. We are giving away a signed uh, DeAndre Hopkins Cardinals helmet. We're also giving away a um, a vintage wallet made out of vintage baseball glove from Fielder's Choice. You can check out the details 
at fantasypros.com slash contest and make sure to get your entries in really quick. All you have to do is leave a screenshot on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher. Take a, uh, leave, leave a review on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher. Take a screenshot and send it to us at fantasypros.com slash contest. I'm sorry, at I'm losing my mind, guys. Contest at fantasypros.com. <laughs> Details are at fantasypros.com slash contest. And don't forget to check out the poker tournament that we're hosting on Thursday, June 25th. Tags Dan Harris and myself are playing. Details at fantasypros.com slash poker. For Kyle Yates and Mike Tagliere, I'm Bobby Sylvester. Thanks for listening and enjoy your football. <laughs>